Justin, the AUKUS submarine deal shows that Australians are open to nuclear technology being used in the defence space. The argument against it for energy production has to, up to now, always been that Australians simply don't want it. Does that remain real? And what needs to be done to shift that view if it persists? Well, Amanda, I think that from your clip just now hitting the streets of Brisbane, it's quite clear that the mood has changed. And I think in an IPA poll last year, it found that a majority of Australians support introducing nuclear energy in order to lower our carbon emissions and ensure energy uh, reliability into the future. In terms of ha bringing those last, uh, those last folks on board and assuring them of its safety and security, public leadership is required. And we've seen some great examples from your home state of Queensland. We've got um, Will Shackle with the Nuclear for Australia group, a, a great young man who, even though he's still in school, is looking to the future of energy security in this country. And Senator Matt Canavan, who's introduced a private member's bill into the Senate to repeal the prohibition on uh, nuclear energy in Australia. And that's the kind of leadership we need to drive the conversation and assure Australians that nuclear power is not only cheap, renewable, but also safe and secure for our future. Claire, Chris Bowen always says to us that nuclear power is too expensive. Uh, is that right? And is that the right reason to maintain the ban? Well, I wouldn't necessarily perceive nuclear energy as being too expensive. What Bowen must be referring to is either something in a contextual aspect in terms of it is too expensive right now or in this particular context, considering the amount that has already been spent um, and not proved as having as great an output with great delays. What he may be referring to is the capital upfront costs, which account for about 70% of what is called the levelised cost of energy, which is the basic economic metric uh, to measure the cost of energy, any energy source. And we really see that the pricing of nuclear energy is very competitive with alternate uh, with alternate sources of energy. So in that regard, based off the standard metric, no, it is not too expensive. Justin, part of the problem here, isn't it, um, is that Labor is attempting to answer the problem of high energy costs with more intermittent renewables. And that's what caused the problem in the first place. They're trying to scaffold that with a gold-plated and absurdly expensive transmission network. But there are easier answers, aren't there? Yes, that's absolutely right. And intermittent is the word. Uh, the sources of energy which the Labor Party especially has been intent on investing in have been unreliable. And we're seeing the effects of that with potential uh, power shortages this coming winter. What needs to be done is to banish this, uh, this ideological refrain of no new coal and gas, which we hear ringing out from the Greens across the Senate and across the parliaments of the several states in this country. Even here in New South Wales, the Greens are trying to make it a condition of supporting a Labor minority government that they will have no new coal and gas projects. But the reality is that the lack of investment in infrastructure, particularly with respect to gas, has caused a lack of reliability, which has flown effects to the grid, which now has led to this gold-plated uh, approach to the transmission lines, which is only necessary because of poor investment in unreliable energy sources.